What's up guys, Questler here, and today we're back for another game development video. In this video, we're going to be covering how to learn game programming fast. We all know programming's hard and it's not easy to learn how to code, but hopefully these tips will help you learn how to program and get better at coding and be able to help you program your games better so that way you can get on your way to making your dream game. With all that being said, let's get right into this. All right, for my first tip, my first tip is to learn the basics of the programming language that you're going to be using in the engine of your choice. Obviously the first step of this whole process is to pick a game engine, and I have a whole video on how to learn game development fast. I suggest you go check it out if you haven't already watched it. Uh, this video is kind of a sequel to that one. I'll have a link on the top right of the screen, so you can go check that out um, in the card. I'll have also a link in the description as well, so you can go check it out. Um, that video has a whole bunch of tips in it uh, that are kind of related to this, but this is kind of a sequel to that video. So I do suggest you go check it out, but you're gonna have to pick a game engine first. But once you have done that, you're gonna want to learn the basics of the programming language that of the game engine that you're using. So like if you're using Unity, you're gonna want to go and learn C Sharp. If you're using Unreal Engine, Blueprinting, CryEngine, Lua, Game Maker Studio, I think has its own scripting language that you'll have to learn. But yeah, you're gonna want to go and learn that programming language, the basics of it. So you're gonna want to learn like what variables are, arrays, classes, methods, uh, probably inheritance, a little bit of object-oriented programming, stuff like that. Like you're gonna want to learn all these kind of things, maybe even some object oriented design principles. So like composition, uh, I mentioned inheritance already, that's object oriented design, uh, composition, decora decorators, uh, and maybe, you know, a few other things, object pooling, stuff like that. You're gonna wanna learn a couple different things and topics that will help you in developing your game. And once you have learned the basic programming language, you can jump into Engine and start programming your stuff. You'll have a better understanding of what methods are, how things relate. Like for example, in Unity, uh, when you make a, uh, a class and a script that is going to be uh, used on like a player character, those are all mono behaviors, right? And mono behavior is a class that Unity basically gives you that has a whole bunch of pre-made functions in it and it inherits all those functions, right? All those methods. And when you learn inheritance, you'll understand, hey, that is inheritance right there. It's using inheritance to do this. And understanding like inheritance, another example of understanding inheritance is like you can make a base player class, right? And then you can have different player subclasses below it, like a mage, a warrior, a summoner, and all these other different like player types, right? And you can have them all inherit from classes that has base functionality. I even do this in The Amazing Ball, which is my game. I'll have a link in the description to go wishlist it. But I even do this with the balls, right? I have a ball class that has all the base functionality of each of the balls, right? And then I build on top of that using blueprinting. It's also worth mentioning that a lot of game engines these days also have visual scripting available. So if you're not really ready to jump into actual coding, you can learn the engine's visual scripting, like Unreal Engine has blueprinting or Unity has its own visual scripting thing that used to be called Bolt. I don't know what it's called now. I have never personally used it, but it is pretty powerful. It allows you to access game objects and use the different functions and stuff that are applied to them. And there's even interoperability with C-sharp. So if you've made custom methods in a C-sharp script, you can use that in your uh, visual scripting scripts as well in Unity. And Unreal Engine has a very similar thing in uh, Blueprints, where Blueprints, like, you can make base functionality in C-sharps and using uh, Unreal Engine's macros, U-property and U-functions, you can basically allow these functions to be viewable in Blueprints and be able to use those functions and stuff like that and call them from within Blueprints and even modify variables and stuff like that using U-properties, right? Um, it, it's important to like understand that and that's one of those kind of things that's really useful where you can have base functionality in the programming language and have it be accessible in the visual scripting if you need to do something really specific that can't be already done. But like I mentioned, you're gonna wanna go learn the basics of the programming language of the engine that you're gonna be using. So Unity, C Sharp, Unreal Engine, C++, CryEngine, Lua, whatever game engine you're using, you're gonna wanna learn the basics of that programming language. If you're deciding to go the visual scripting route, you can skip that and just start learning the basics of the visual scripting system that is in the engine of your choice. Unity's visual scripting system, Unreal Engine's blueprints, uh, those are available and you should go learn the basics of those and try to approach learning those the same way you learn like any other programming. Keep in mind that the visual scripting systems are very powerful. Blueprints in Unreal Engine is incredibly powerful. You can do 99% of everything that you need to do in Blueprints. You can probably make your entire game in Blueprints and never touch C++. So it is powerful. It'll allow you to do everything you want it to do full stop. Like you can totally do everything you want to do in there. But if you want to delve into C++, which can be difficult, you can learn that as well. That is an option uh, for learning and coding your games as well. So if you want to go learn the basics of C++, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube to teach you that. 
and uh, you can go ahead and do that. Another tip that I have, so for my second tip that goes hand in hand with learning the basics of the programming language that you'll be using is to do small projects in that language before delving into game development. So take the small topics that you're learning like arrays, loops, conditional logic and stuff like that and do small little projects with them and maybe find small little projects online that you can follow along with and do to further drive home the knowledge that you need to know on the topics, right? You won't really truly understand something until you get your hands dirty and start working on it and actually start doing it, right? You can watch a video and learn something in a YouTube video and you can follow along with it and understand it, but you're not going to really truly understand it until you use it for yourself and understand all the applications on your own, within your own programming environment. So that's why I suggest making some small projects outside of game development to help you understand the basics and drive home that basic knowledge in that programming language that you're using, that you're going to be learning to program your games in the future, right? So yeah, those are the first two tips and then we're going to move on to the third one right now. All right, for my third tip is to actually start hopping into Engine and start learning the framework of the game engine that you're using. Unity and Unreal Engine have frameworks that are developed around developing games in their specific platforms. Same thing with Game Maker Studio and CryEngine. They all have their own workflows and you're gonna have to learn that, right? So delving into that and now that you've already had the prior programming knowledge in the language that you've learned the basics of, you can now start learning the things that are specific to the engine that you're using. So for example, using Unity, you could start learning how components go on to game objects, right? So you can learn how to access the components and start accessing and playing with the code, like rigid bodies and stuff like that, and using the methods that are built into those components. It's also worth mentioning that how components work on game objects in Unity is actually composition, which is a object-oriented design principle, which is why I kind of mentioned before that it's important to understand how composition is, because you're actually gonna be using that very design principle in your game programming when you're designing and making your game in Unity, right? Uh, same thing with Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine has its own workflow that you're going to want to follow along with, like with using U properties. And it's very likely that if you're using C++ and Unreal Engine, you're going to be still using Blueprints anyway. So you're going to want to get that understanding of Blueprints regardless. Unity is far less reliant on its visual scripting system, unlike Unreal. So you can probably get away with just doing everything in C Sharp if you want to in Unity, or you can just do the visual scripting stuff in Unity as well. They're, they're both options to you, but I do suggest uh, understanding the framework and learning more about it, and maybe checking out the documentation for your game engine to help you understand how the framework works, right? Because Unreal Engine, for example, has its own data structures and like that its own implementations of data structures like arrays and stuff like that and it even has its own implementations of variable types like strings to be used in engine so it's kind of important to learn the framework on top of the basic programming knowledge that you're already going to have and it's also worth noting that um understanding that framework is going to help you develop your games and better but the reason why i mentioned learning the basics of the programming language First is because you're not going to have to learn the framework and the basics of the programming knowledge you're going to be using at the same time. You're just going to be building on top of that, right? You're going to have that foundational knowledge of the basics of the programming language that you're using, like C Sharp with Unity, and then you can slap that C sh that uh, Unity framework on top of that so you'll have a better understanding about everything goes together when you start jumping in and making your scripts to go on your game objects in Unity. Same thing with Unreal Engine. You'll have that basic knowledge of C++ first when you start making that logic and stuff like that and putting blueprints on top of that, right? So it'll all come together and you'll have a better understanding overall of how to program and develop your games when you have that basic programming knowledge that'll help you tremendously when you're developing your games. All right, for tip number four. My fourth tip is to make small projects in the engine that you're gonna be using. Uh, so that way you can build upon to help you understand that foundational knowledge in the framework of the engine that you're going to be using to develop your games, right? If you start making small projects, like for example, using one working on just player movement, understanding how to get the character moving around and stuff like that, and then you do like another project with working like with menu systems or stuff like that, you'll be able to kind of tie those things all together when you actually go to develop your dream game. And you'll be able to take all of those little bits and pieces and knowledge that you've gained over the course of doing some small projects and mesh it all together and make an actual full game out of it, right? Because you'll know how to do each of these individual little things and you'll be able to combine them all together. Not only that, doing small projects makes things manageable and easy to learn so that way you can only focus on one thing at a time. And this goes hand in hand with learning the framework and even with learning the basics of the programming language that you're going to be using to develop your games. It'll make it way easier for you to just learn each individual thing. And then later down the line, when you actually go to develop a game, 
full scale, right? And you want to develop an actual game that you plan on releasing on itch.io, Steam, uh, Simmer.io, or wherever you plan to release it. I mean, heck, you could probably release your game on Xbox and PlayStation too. Uh, but whatever you're going to be doing and wherever you're going to be releasing it, you'll have the knowledge and you'll be able to develop that game a lot easier having all that foundational knowledge. And you'll be able to tie all those little things that you've learned all together. But it's also worth noting that even when you start making that game, you're still gonna be learning new things and having to consult the internet and use the internet to learn and develop your game as well and have to learn new things as you go. So there's no way you're gonna learn every aspect of the framework and the whole workflow of everything in your engine by you know doing small projects, but at least when you start doing small projects focusing on core things like player movement enemy ai menu systems and stuff like that you'll have the knowledge already there and you'll be able to build upon it and further help yourself with developing an actual game all right now time for tip number five my fifth tip is to use online resources use the internet the internet is there for you to search and help you solve problems that arise when you're programming your games follow tutorial series check the forums check the documentation of your engine all this stuff is going to be useful to help you develop your games. You're going to have to constantly solve problems and, you know, consult the internet and look on the forums, look on YouTube to help you solve problems that come up while making your game. But also, you can follow tutorials and stuff to make small projects as well. And heck, there are even courses that you can use online as well to help you learn different aspects in game development as well, like on Udemy and stuff like that. So using we learning websites like Skillshare, Brilliant, Udemy, uh, and stuff like that can help you learn not only computer science topics, but also programming concepts as well. So just taking all that stuff together and using YouTube, the documentation, forums, um, and those learning websites, you can really learn a whole lot. And those will all help you learn how to program your games. When you come up to any issues and stuff like that, consult the internet. And also it's worth mentioning with the whole prevalence of AI these days, ChatGPT is also really useful as well, or GitHub Copilot. If you're paying for GitHub Copilot, that is a big resource that can help you write code faster and also help you when you run into any issues on how to program something in your game. Uh, Copilot even has its own integration in Visual Studio. If you're using Visual Studio to program your games with C++ and Unreal Engine or C Sharp with Unity, uh, Copilot is just baked right in there. So if you have a Copilot subscription, you can just use that and consult it when you want to learn something like oh i don't know how to make a menu how do i program my menu to um play the game or something i don't know like how to start my game or you know whatever you got to use it like copilot's there it'll help you do that it also is worth mentioning that chat gpt sometimes can give you garbage answers that are dead wrong i've had problems with this in the past while programming when asking it something it'll sometimes give you methods and stuff that aren't actually there in the language and it'll just sometimes spit out garbage that's just dead wrong. So you might wanna check the resource, like the, the source where the AI is getting it from and that'll probably help you out and you could probably determine whether it's an actual like resource or that's actually like something you could use. Cause sometimes it does spit out garbage. So that is worth mentioning that sometimes it might be better off just to check the forums or something like that, or to just not use AI as a whole. Um, as useful it is, as it is, it can sometimes waste your time. Um, so yeah, that is worth mentioning. But yeah, use the internet, the internet's there. Software engineers and software developers use the internet every day to help them solve problems with professional code that they're developing on these enterprise systems that we use. Like I'm sure YouTube engineers use YouTube and Stack Overflow and tutorials and stuff like that to do things that they're programming on the back end of the YouTube application, right? So it is worth mentioning that even software engineers have to Google stuff once in a while. So you should definitely use Google. Google is your friend. There's so many things out there to help you out, learn this stuff and help you solve problems as you're developing your games. So yeah, I would definitely suggest using the internet. It is a big resource. And it's also worth noting that all, a lot of these game engines also have their own learning sections, so I suggest checking that out as well. Unity has its Create with Code series on there. They In the Unity Hub, it has a whole learning section. Unreal Engine has a whole learning section as well. I'm sure CryEngine has a learning thing. I'm sure Game Maker Studio does as well. Like A lot of these game engines all have a learning sections where you can learn uh, different things, and they have videos and tutorials and stuff like that from them to help you learn how to use their game engine. So that's not just related to programming, that's also related to just sheerly using the game engine as a whole. So it's important to go check that out as well and to just kind of keep trying and doing stuff. Uh, that's kind of another big thing is to just never give up. Uh, I know game development is hard, I know programming is hard, but if you keep sticking with it, you will get better at it 
and uh, you'll be able to develop your game sooner than you think. So, yeah. With all that being said, that's pretty much all the tips I have for this video. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment if you have any questions, or any tips that you'd like to give to new developers, as well if I miss something or something like that. Uh, leave your own tips in the, the comment section. Also, be sure to check out the Amazing Ball. I have a link in the description on that. Uh, you can go check out the Steam page and wishlist it. That'd be pretty sick if you could do that. I plan on releasing the game at least at some point next year. That's pretty much it. Uh, be, also, be sure to hit, click that subscribe button, too, uh, for more videos like this one. All right. Well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Peace out.